Hey up lads and lasses, Danfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Today, as you can see behind me, we are looking at the Solar Whale. Quick shout out again to uh, Hell's Wolf. He is the uh, the guy that helped me out here and provided some screenshots of the systems I am missing. I've got a fair few systems here of my own, unfortunately, all the crap ones. So we'll go through them anyway. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have a bit of a chat about them as we do, as per usual. And yeah, let's jump into the video. So here we go, jumping into the blueprints and first off, We'll look at M1, as uh, we have done for the last couple of videos, at least anyway. And yeah, so, Corvette Dock. Everyone knows this one, it comes with it. You get six Corvettes, it's really, really nice. It's really pretty decent, to be honest. Six Corvettes, I mean, you're bringing in six uh, T800s or six cellular defenders or um, Nebula Chaser pulses. Really quite good, has really high damage potential, but, you know... As mentioned in previous videos about carriers, this is all carriers are pretty much completely dependent on what pulls you've managed on your fighters, your bombers, your corvettes, etc. So, corvette dock, really quite cool. We then have in M2, uh, it replaces the corvette dock and you get eight large aircraft. Now, again, this is very, very dependent on... Uh, whether you've got the aircraft to fill this, bear in mind that large aircraft are the likes of fighter, uh, sorry, bombers. So you're looking at the Bullfrog Stingray and the Vetus B. I kind of would like if they added like another bomber. It'd be nice, I think. Um, either way, yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, eight large fighters. You can put medium and small in this. It's no issue. But if you can fill this full of Vetus Bs and Stingrays, you're pushing a hell of a lot of potential uh, DPM out with those. The force multiplier of carriers is not insignificant, and that's the reason why they are such high CP costs, is because of the force multiplier of having these... Um, hangers filled with very well potentially very high damage dpm uh and cp uh, cost effective ships so yeah uh between this and the m1 slot it, again yeah both are really good both are very situational and depending on your pulls so not much to discuss really there we then look at uh, A, which I believe is the integrated armor armory. So in A1, you have the integrated armory. This comes with the dual heavy cannons, which is 5,120 DPM. You get two times one attacks per round, 15 second cooldown and a five second lock on. 320 damage per hit, it's not bad at all. You also get this Dodaka anti-ship missile system, which is a target small. 8 second duration, 1 times 8 attacks per round with a 35 second cooldown and a 4 second lock on. Notice that they do have anti-aircraft range here, can counter the, um, basically, anything within the, I believe this is mid row now, do they? They did change it, it used to be front row. Yeah, it's mid row now, which makes kind of sense and kind of not sense, because it is super tanky, I mean, 300,000 HP on this thing at base, and you can upgrade that, so... And 120 armor. Um, anyway, so yeah, not a bad little backup system um, at all. Uh, I kind of prefer A2 personally, and that replaces the two cannons for two ship missile arrays doing 120 uh, per hit and a 1 times 16 attacks per round. That's a lot of attacks to hit at 120 damage each, and there's a pair of these. So although the DPM might be low, the alpha's pretty damn high, theoretically, with this. And uh, being also destroyer and anti-frigate with the dodecafire system also being anti-small destroyer frigate actually matches up quite nicely. And this can really help, you know, do considerable damage to destroyer and frigate fleets. I personally prefer A2. A1 is just as good though. Solar Whale surprisingly can dish out quite a considerable amount of damage considering they are carriers, uh, which is why I'm kind of looking forward to getting my hands on that uh, Marshall Crooks because 
if that can dish out you know considerably more damage than this well you're talking about a very very strong carrier in that respect of so a3 the one that i don't have you lose the cannons for these four anti-ship cannons which are fight corvette fighter primarily with destroyer frigate as a uh, tertiary for some reason even though the dpm is higher versus the anti-ship and it only has 345 dpm per minute versus aircraft which you know it just makes no sense at two attacks per round with a eight second cooldown and stuff um, I genuinely don't recommend this. If you're going to be running carriers, you're going to be running uh, the likes of spores in slots and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, any anti-aircraft um, specific weapons, I just don't recommend uh, running. So yeah, A2 for me personally, A1 is probably on par, maybe a little bit behind, depending on what you're fighting, of course. A2 uh, I think is a pretty good shout though. We then look at B1, and this is the ship maintenance, sit, um, maintenance system that a lot of people say is really good and I think is absolutely terrible, and I'll explain that now. Aircraft returning to all hangars recover 10 HP. Most aircraft don't return to your hangars. They're all dead. They're all dead, Dave. Everybody's dead, Dave. So... This is why I don't think it's particularly good, and I think if you can get B2 and switch it out, you should do instantly, and that's due to the fact that B2 is three more Corvettes. So with the uh, base system carrying five and this carrying three, that's now a total of eight Corvettes you can uh, carry in. No, six, nine. Nine Corvettes you can carry in. Uh, or you swap into the eight large aircraft, uh, and that's eight plus these three Corvettes. You're now carrying 11 aircraft. Not bad. That's on par with the CV3K with a couple of modules. Plus, this has slightly better DPM, a much better tank. Bear in mind, though, it is slow as... Well, it's as slow as an ST-59, so there you go. So, definitely run B2 if you've got it. Yeah, definitely run B2 if you got it. Then... This is where I said, like, I've got loads of these really good sy like systems for this, but they're all crap. So I've only got C2, which is the CG UAV, but we'll get onto that in a second and we'll do this in order. So in C1, we have the uh, integrated aircraft hangar that can house enough five additional large fighters. As you know, mentioned before, carrying large fighters is fantastic. If you run this with the eight large and this, you're now carrying 13 large fighters in on a single solar whale bring in the extra three corvettes you're now at 16 aircraft in the air from the single ship yep the solar whale is probably the best carrier as a carrier um, I prefer the CV3K due to the fact that its movement speed is considerably higher and here's me saying the guy that I run ST59s in all my fleets so yeah <laughs> take that with a grain of salt uh, the solar whale is a better carrier uh, than the cv3k but it's a lot more dependent on modules you need one or two modules uh to make the 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 cv3k really quite formidable of at being a carrier with a solar whale you're looking for you know the b2 slot you're looking for one of the c slots you're looking either for you know the m1 or the m2 well the m1 slot you've got but the m2 slot you might be looking for so yeah and this is extremely versatile if you get all of it it becomes either a fantastic bomber carrier or a fantastic corvette carrier or you can mix and match a little bit there as well so yeah definitely pretty decent i highly recommend uh c1 if you can pick it up C2, Siege UAV system, uh, stay away from this one, uh, just completely. 6,000 DPM UAVs isn't particularly good, and this is Siege fire, by the way, this is Siege. It does nothing to ships, so bear that in mind as well. Nothing to ships. So this is pretty much useless. In pretty much every scenario, you will want either C1 or C3. So ignore this. Uh, if you can again leaving it in the pool means you might pull it again which sucks so you may have to pick it up anyway 
So, C3. You add a missile defense system. Now, this is an interesting one because it's actually pretty good. This does 120 damage per hit. Yes, it primarily attacks corvettes and fighters, but it can hit destroyers and frigates. It's 1 times 12 attacks per round with a 6 second duration, a 5 second cooldown, and a 3 second lock on speed. This thing can actually do pretty substantial DPM. It has interception as well, and being mid row, it's not too bad because any of the missiles going to the mid row or to the rear row have a chance of being intercepted therefore reducing damage taken. So not bad at all. I could see there might be some kind of interesting weird solar whale sleeper build where you run um, this, then maybe you run uh, the uh, extra missile system here and on A2. So you're running A2 and A3, and then you probably run the extra corvettes and the extra hangars instead of... So yeah, you may lose some aircraft carrying capability here from that because you don't get the C1 slot, the extra five large aircraft. But you're going to get a pretty decent system that does, you know, remarkably all right DPM on top of the A2 slot doing all right DPM. And it's all anti-smaller and anti-fighter and with a bit of interception in there. It's, uh, it's probably not a bad idea. And I have seen solar whales in battle reports doing pretty decent damage by themselves. Now that the battle reports don't record the um, aircraft damage, you can really see how much damage these uh, bonus or extra weapon systems on these ships are doing. And it's, yeah, they're, they're not bad on, for the solar whale. And again, with its tankiness and what have you, it's, it's a pretty good ship. It's just kind of ugly. It is a giant floating brick. Anyway. That's it for the Solar Whale. In my opinion, you're running either M1 or M2. You're running B2 in almost all circumstances. I don't think the ship maintenance system is particularly good. Um, for C, you're either running C1 or C3 for more fighters or for the anti-missile system. And for A, you're running A1 or A2, depending if you want a little bit extra anti-large damage or a little bit more anti-small. I would recommend the anti-small over the large, uh, mostly due to the fact that the anti-large at 320 uh, alpha on it is going to get mitigated pretty nastily by heavily armored targets. If, For example, if this thing starts shooting an ST-59, it's going to do 32 damage. So do bear that in mind. Otherwise, that is it. If anyone has the Marshall Crooks, do let me know, especially if you've got the modules for it uh, and you don't mind me showing them off. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll sort something out and send them over to me. And I'll also try and get the Marshall Crooks out as well. And we'll have a real look at what that ship's capable of with systems and stuff like that. We do know, obviously, of some of the systems, but we haven't found all of them. Uh, well, the ones we have, we know about, we've seen. Um, and I spoke about them a little bit when I uh, did the look at the Marshall Crooks and its systems. Either way, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.